Hello everyone. We are going to continue with the chapter atoms and molecules. So today uh, I'll teach you how to write the chemical formula. Right. So first of all, let us know what is meant by a chemical formula. Chemical formula is a symbolic representation of the composition of a compound. Symbolic representation means like if we say, uh, suppose sodium chloride. So you have learnt now the symbol of sodium. Sodium is Na. Right. And chlorine, it is Cl. When we write it in the compound form, we call it as chloride. Right. Single, if we write like this, we call it as chlorine. But when it is written in the form of a compound, then we call it as chloride. Same way sulfur we call as sulfide. Oxygen we call as oxide. Right? So this is how we write. So this is the symbolic representation of the composition of a compound. That a compound, it is composed of sodium and chlorine. Right? For writing the chemical formula, that is why uh, last time also I told you it is very important that you learn all the symbols and valencies because if you will not learn the symbols, how will you write the formula? Same way for goes for valencies also. What is a valency? It is the combining capacity. The, uh, what is the combining capacity of, a, of an element? Right? Now there are certain uh, steps to be followed for writing the chemical formula. One is that valency should balance. Right? Then uh, how they should balance that we will learn now. Uh, secondly, always the metal like we write just now we wrote NaCl. First, the metal will be written and then the non-metal will be written. Right? It is always the metal first and the non-metal next. Right? That is, uh, this side, left hand side will be uh, metal and uh, right hand side will be the non-metal. It's always like this. Any other formula also we can take like uh, if we say uh, calcium oxide. So calcium it is a metal, oxygen is non-metal. So here see I have written oxygen, we do not read it as calcium oxygen. We read it as calcium oxide. Oxygen will be read as oxide. Right? And thirdly if we are writing any polyatomic ion then we uh, always write a bracket first uh, before putting the numbers like um, calcium hydroxide. Now, how hydroxide? It is written as OH. Now first uh, step I said the val valency should balance. Now the valency of calcium is 2 and of hydroxide it is 1. So we always write in a cross way. So here we will put a bracket five first. And then we will put the number here. We will not write it like this CaOH2. For writing this we have to first put a bracket. Now why this two will come here? Let's do this. Now I teach you how to write the chemical formula. So, let's start with the first example. Uh, first example we can take of um, like say HCl. Just now I took NaCl. Let's take HCl. Now HCl, hydrogen, it has got valency 1. Right? Chlorine also has valency 1. 
So when we write the valencies, we always write it in crisscross way. That is valency of non-metal will be written here. Now here both are non-metal but H is always having a positive ion. So the valency of chlorine will be written with hydrogen and valency of hydrogen with chlorine. So we write it as HCl. We do not write it as H1Cl1. If the valencies are same, then we do not write the valencies. But on the other hand, suppose we are writing for magnesium chloride. Now, what happens? Valency of magnesium is 2 positive and of chlorine is 1. 1 negative. So, when we cross this, valency of chlorine will be written by with magnesium. So, if it is 1, we do not write it. It is understood that this is 1. Right? And when we write chlorine, valency of magnesium will be written with chlorine. So, we write here 2. So, it becomes MgCl2. Right? Same way, just now I took the example of CaO with you, calcium oxide. Right? So, what happens when we write calcium oxide? Ca, it has got valency 2 positive. Oxygen also has 2 negative. If the valencies are same, so 2 positive will be crossed out by 2 negative. Then we do not write it as Ca2O2. We do not write it like this. We simply write it CaO because both are having same valencies. So first we have to balance the valencies on both the sides. Right? Then we always write metal first and then the non-metal. And if it is polyatomic like just now uh, we took the example of calcium hydroxide. We can also take uh, some other example. Like suppose if we are taking NaOH. Now Na has valency 1 positive sodium. Hydroxide OH it is a polyatomic ion. This also has valency 1 negative. So because both are having 1-1 one, one valency we simply write it as NaOH. Right? On the other hand, if it was magnesium hydroxide. So what happens? Valency of magnesium here is 2 positive. And hydroxide, that is OH has valency 1 negative. When we crisscross it, what will happen? Mg will re remain as Mg only because OH has got valency 1. So we do not write 1 here. But this OH... Because we have to write the valency of magnesium with it and magnesium has valency 2 positive. We write it first in the bracket and then we put 2 here. This means this 2 is for O also and H also. If we simply write it as MgOH2, this means this 2 is only for H. While OH is a polyatomic ion, we have to write it together. So we put OH here uh, a bracket and then 2. And now how it is read? It is read as MgOH whole twice. If there is 3 then we call it as thrice. Right? Uh, let's take some more examples. Like if we take the example of aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide. Now, aluminium has valency 3 positive. Oxygen has valency 2 negative. Right? So, when we cross it out, how will we write? Al, then this 2 will be written here. And O and this 3 will be written with O. So, it becomes Al2O3. Right. Now, if it was uh, aluminium sulfate, if it was aluminium sulfate, so 
what we do here is aluminium has valency 3 positive and sulfate is a polyatomic ion having valency 2 negative. So we will write the valency of sulfate with aluminium. It will become Al2 and SO4 together we write SO4 that is sulfate and we have to write the valency 3 with it. So first we put a bracket and then we write 3 here. Aluminium sulfate. If it is suppose ammonium chloride. Now ammonium is NH4. Chloride is Cl. NH4 has valency 1 positive. Cl also has valency 1 negative. So we write it as NH4Cl. Right? So this is how we write the chemical formula. Right? And if it was suppose uh, ammonium sulfate, then see, ammonium has valency 1 positive. Sulfate has valency 2 negative. So we cross it and it becomes NH4 whole twice. This valency we will write with ammonia. NH4 whole twice and SO4. Because valency of ammonium is 1, we will not write it in bracket. Right? We leave it like this. So it becomes ammonia sulfate. Right? So this is, you, you have to practice. This will come with practice. For sodium nitrate, NaNO3. Now because sodium also has valency 1, NO3 has valency 1. So we will write simply as NaNO3. Right? Uh, any other example? Uh, we can take uh, zinc chloride. Zinc has valency 2 positive, chlorine has valency 1. So we write the valency of zinc with chlorine and chlorine has valency 1 only. We do not write anything here. It becomes ZnCl2. Okay. So this is how the chemical formulae are formed. And valencies, if you forget the valencies, and you remember, I told you this before also I told you, if you remember the atomic number, you can find out the valency also. Like aluminium. Aluminium atomic number is 13. So its electronic configuration will be 2, 8, 3. That means it has got 3 electrons in the outermost orbit. It becomes Al3+. plus. Right? Magnesium. Magnesium atomic number is 12. So, 2, 8, 2. Two electrons in the outermost orbit. It becomes Mg2+. plus. Chlorine. Chlorine has atomic number 17. So, its electronic configuration will be 2, 8, 7. It has 7 electrons in the outermost orbit. It will take one electron to become an octet. So because it is taken here, these will give away the electrons. Till number 3. If there are 3 electrons in the outermost orbit, it can very easily give away the electrons. Right? So here it is 7. If it is more than 3, then it tries to gain the electrons. So here it will gain 1 electron and become 1 negative. Right? Uh, oxygen is 16. Right? So, it will be, uh, sorry, atomic number is 8. So, it will be 2, 6. That means it will try to take 2 electrons and become 2 negative. So, this is how we for write the chemical formula and if you forget the valencies you can 
learn the valencies by learning the atomic number right then next is how to find the molecular mass now what is molecular mass it is the sum of the atomic masses of all the atoms in a molecule of the substance right and this is always expressed as relative atomic mass unit it is expressed in atomic mass unit that is u now some of the atomic masses of all the atoms in a molecule suppose we take a molecule of water right a molecule of water so some of the atomic masses of all the atoms now atomic mass of hydrogen so here we have which which element hydrogen and oxygen atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and because it is h2 we will multiply it by 2 plus when we have to find the sum we always add it so an atomic mass of oxygen is 16 so 2 plus 16 it will be 18 u right uh let's take another example <coughs> suppose we take it of c2h5oh let's take when there are more than two elements so here we have carbon hydrogen oxygen then hydrogen again right so carbon what is the atomic mass of carbon it is 12 so this will be 12 into 2 right so always underline this so that you remember you have to multiply 2 with this 12 plus hydrogen is 1 it is written 5 here so it will be 1 into 5 plus oxygen is 16 plus h is 1 right so it will be 12 to the 24 plus 5 plus 17 16 1 will be 17 so how much will it make it will be 5 plus 4 9 9 and 7 16 and 2 into 4 46 this is how you find the molecular mass Let's take some more examples. Like we can take the example of uh, CH four. We can take that is methane. Now carbon is twelve plus one into four, so it will be twelve plus four is equal to sixteen u. We have to write the unit also along with it, right? For carbon dioxide, a molecule of carbon dioxide, it will be twelve plus sixteen into two. now i i told you to underline it why i told you to underline so that by mistake you should not do like this 12 plus 16 right 28 and then 28 multiplied by 2 56 that answer will be wrong so that you remember that you have to multiply this i told you to underline this so that you remember it will be 12 plus 32 so how much it will be 44 this way if you underline you will remember right um some more examples if you want we can take some more examples also like if we take uh, the example of uh, say ammonia nh3 right nitrogen is 14 hydrogen is 1 into 3 so it will be 
plus 3 is equal to 17u. So very easy to find out the molecular mass. Then comes the next thing that is formula unit mass. It is a sum of the atomic masses of all atoms in a formula unit of a compound. We find it out in the same way as we calculate this. The only difference between molecular mass and formula unit mass is that formula unit mass is used for those substances whose constituent particles are ions. Right? Like for NaCl. Because NaCl, we can break it down into ions. Na and chloride ions. Right? So, if we find out for NaCl, it will be Right? Sodium is 23. The atomic mass of sodium is 23. Plus 35.5 is the atomic mass of chlorine. So when we, cal <coughs> when we calculate this, it becomes... Fifty eight point five U. Right, we can calculate for zinc oxide. Now zinc oxide, zinc atomic mass is sixty five plus oxygen is sixteen. It will come to eighty one U. Same way, if we find for Na two O, so sodium twenty three. Now this is 2, so 23 multiplied by 2 plus 16. So what will it be? It will be 46 plus 16 is equal to 62u. One more example is given there. That is K2C. O3, potassium carbonate. Now, K is 39. So, 39 into 2. Right? Plus, now we have K, we have C, we have O. So, 39 into 2 plus carbon which is 12 plus oxygen which is 16 multiplied by 3. Right? We underline this. That this is 39 into 2. Then we have only carbon. Then we have oxygen. So this will be 78 plus 12 plus 48. So what will be the answer? 138 U. So this is how we calculate the molecular mass and the formula unit mass. Right? So with this uh, we finish this topic and now next time we will take the mole concept. A very important topic. Right? Which will be continued then in class 11th also. So, next time we'll take up with the mole concept. Till then, you practice these, right? Practice how to write the uh, formula of different compounds and then uh, finding out the molecular mass of those compounds. The method for finding the molecular mass and the formula unit mass is exactly the same. Alright? So, keep studying and keep safe. Thank you.